And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode 45. That's a good number right there. Well, uh, this episode's coming a little later than usual, but um, I was had a long weekend. I was actually down in New York City this weekend, the big old apple, and uh, had a lot of fun. Very in and out, just basically uh, going to pick up some at the airport, but uh, so if I... You know, if I missed you and didn't uh, tell you I was coming down, all my New York City people, I apologize, but I'll be down back again. Uh, anyways, while I was there, uh, just a real fantastic sighting. I tell people this all the time, and it's very true. It doesn't matter where I am. Every time I see an Aerostar, it's like this huge surprise and it just lifts my mood. It's just this beautiful little, um, you know, uh, unexpected uh, buoyancy that comes over me. And while I was down there, I was walking, we, we were driving actually to find a parking spot. And uh, boom, right in front of me, this beautiful, long, extended uh, Ford Aerostar, blue on blue, light over dark blue. Now, the more I looked at it, the more I realized how janky it was. Um, but I was still very smitten by it nonetheless. I don't know what year it was. Obviously, as you can see in some of the pictures I'll put up here, uh, smashed out windshield. And as I was taking pictures of it, some guy said, uh, hey, uh, you know, come around this side. It's open over here. And uh, it was very funny. So I got a lot of humor, even, you know, just me taking pictures of this van, people thought it was funny. Uh, but then as I looked closer, I saw that it was an all-wheel drive version. So an extended all-wheel drive version is really sort of, in some ways, the, the preeminent, you know, the most loaded you can get in an Aerostar, not in terms of luxury, but in terms of size and uh, capability. You know, you got your extended version, as much space you can possibly have, and of course the electronic four-wheel drive. So that's a good lead into today's Aerostar, which is a 1997 Ford Aerostar XLT extended minivan listed in St. Augustine, Florida. Of course, we are doing our little, uh, you know, um, Eastern seaboard sweep here. Um, and this listed for just $5,000. Now, of course, $5,000, a, a fairly uh, steep price for an Aerostar when you look at a lot of the other ones uh, going about. I would say actually kind of a middle of the road. You know, they go anywhere from like $800 to, you know, 13000 14000 14000 We've seen some here. So it's actually quite middle of the road. And I think a very modest price for this Aerostar, as we'll get into. Uh, 179,000 miles. Automatic transmission, exterior white. This says 15 city, 20 highway for a combined 17. And that is, you'll notice, a little lower than some of the other Aerostars because of both the extended version and the all-wheel drive, which adds some weight. And the 4.0 liter engine, which, uh, although a very uh, sort of robust engine, is known as sort of a gas guzzler. So... I wanted to do this one uh, today just because it's very beautiful and it caught my eye, but also my good buddy Sticks, who you've heard mentioned here perhaps before, him and I just had a great conversation. He's in the market for a tow vehicle. So he wants a van that can, you know, fit sheets of plywood and a lot of stuff in it, but he also wants to be able to tow it. Um, and he happens to be down sort of in this general area. I won't say exactly where. Um, not too, too far away from here. And so I mean, we talk about vehicles a lot. And anytime it comes up, I always sort of try to, as I do with anybody who's ever buying a car, sort of weasel my way in and, and, and see how I could possibly convince him to buy an Aerostar. And the funny thing is, because of the Aerostar's versatility, a lot of times it's actually not that unreasonable of an option. The other thing that's funny is... It just sort of shows um, where the, the car market is, especially in sort of utility vehicles. And it highlights just how unique and versatile the Aerostar is and how ahead of its time it was. Because nowadays, if you want to get like sort of a tow uh, rig, you know, that's not a gargantuan pickup truck. And that, you know, a lot of times doesn't have the enclosed van section anyways. Um, you know, you have your Dodge Promaster and your Ford Transit. Uh, great vans, but a lot of those aren't super, uh, they're, a lot of them are front wheel drive now, um, which doesn't really matter, but they don't have an all wheel drive option. I believe the Transit, the big Transit does offer all wheel drive option, but you know, you're looking at fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, I believe. Um, your Promasters and things like that, I believe are front wheel drive. 
and even your you know Mercedes uh, Metris, which I believe is rear-wheel drive, but no no all-wheel drive option. And a lot of the towing capacities. Now you could check me if I'm wrong in this, but I believe on those vehicles is not uh, you know it's maybe 1,800 to 3,000 pounds, something like that. I don't think those vehicles can really tow a lot of uh, weight. On the other side of things, you have your Ford Econolines and your Chevy Expresses, which I think the Econoline is discontinued as of a few years ago, and the Chevy Express they may still make. Now, those can tow quite a bit more. They're more truck-based. You even used to be able to get like the Econoline with a 7.3 diesel engine, which um, I think is actually a great option. If you can find one of those, that'd be kind of amazing. Um, and But normally, they have a V8-powered gas engine that can certainly tow a lot more weight it's sort of more based on a truck you know whether you're getting the e150 e250 or e350 i think even the e150 just like a ford f150 can probably tow a decent amount of weight however you got the big v8 engine in there um, it's kind of heavy and you're not going to get very good mileage. I would have to look up what that Vortec is, but I, I have to think it's not going to get you 20 miles to the gallon on the highway. Now, maybe in later years that's changed. As engines has, have gotten more efficient, you have your cylinder, cylinder deactivation and things of that nature, 20 miles a gallon probably isn't totally out of the question. However, the point remains that you know from 1986 to 1997, there existed a vehicle that could haul... Um, now I should say, I think the all wheel drive model came out in, in like 92 or 93, something like that. So, but given that still 30 some odd years ago, you had a vehicle that could fit four by eight sheets of plywood in the back. You could have a vehicle that would tow 5,000 pounds, have an all wheel drive option, um, for, you know, the Northeast and things of that nature. And, um, would still get you, you know, 20, 22 miles a gallon. Furthermore, nowadays, instead of spending, you know, upwards of 40, you know, Mercedes Sprinter is another good option, but those are 40, 50, 60. I mean, the sky's the limit on those. Here we have this beautiful uh, rig for a, a paltry price of $5,000. So I think it's a perfect example of actually trying to put the modern, the Aerostar into a modern context and see how it really does still kind of stand the test of time. It really is this vehicle that's just got the right specs in the right areas you know 5,000 towing capacity all-wheel drive and a large unencumbered cargo area those three things right there for a reasonable price are still very very hard to get in the automotive market today so i just thought that was cool and i wanted to highlight it and of course this is a beautiful van and i just saw an all-wheel drive aerostar in the city obviously so it kind of want started percolating in my head i really want to get an all-wheel drive extended that's sort of probably you know unless something really amazing comes up when i have uh you know the, the resources to acquire another aerostar that that'll probably be it but not it as in finish but the next one <laughs> super clean seller's description ac blows cold four by four works great would be an awesome beach vehicle or weekend camper bought and used for a few trips and no longer need two vehicles fair enough Front brake rotors and calipers, fuel pump, brake master cylinder, radiator, all replaced within the last six months. So there you go. Recent service. That's probably, you know, um, for your front rotors and calipers, you know, that's calipers are a decent little job. Your fuel pump, um, brake master cylinder. So it sounds like your brakes are all in good shape. Radiator. That's another, you know, a couple hundred bucks for parts and then labor. Uh, all replaced within the last six months. So it's probably you know close to $1,000, if not more, in, in maintenance. I have it set up as a camper now, but can include and or switch out to put the seats in. $5,500 or best offer, obviously. It's been lowered down to $5,000 now. Or, uh, sometimes I see this a lot where the, 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 the price of or best offer in the description will actually be higher than the price listed, but it doesn't have like a slash through it saying that it had been lowered. So either you know once you see that price up top in the main screen it's kind of hard to you know argue your way up from there but neither here nor there um and it's a florida vehicle so presumably it's uh, rust free now who knows if it spent its whole time in florida but obviously this looks very very clean you have your roof rack on top and uh, we'll cycle through some of the pictures here again same uh, sort of front three quarter uh, shot now I do like how the front hubcaps oh look at that you got on this side you got a no hubcap on the front hubcap on the rear and then on the back it's switched so hubcap on front no hubcap hubcap on the rear why not I would take all of them off I think the black steel wheels look fantastic with the white body and the great bumpers just leave it be you know um, run your steel wheels now what I want to know 
looks like we do have perhaps a small window, window tint here, is I've seen this 4x4 logo on quite a few Aerostars now. And, uh, you know, there is some debate on you know, the, the electronic all-wheel drive system or electronic four-wheel drive system being something more of an all-wheel drive system. Now, it was a full-time system. You couldn't, um, you know, put it in and out of... Uh, four-wheel drive. A lot of people say these are basically a Ranger that's turned into a van. That's not quite true. There's some, the, the, the chassis uh, and frame to this vehicle, I believe, is uh, bespoke to the Ford Aerostar. The, the, is it the VN1, I think they call it. Um, so your uh, suspension was slightly different, and obviously your, your four-wheel drive on a Ranger is you can select it. It's not just a full-time. So it's more like an all-wheel drive system than a four-wheel drive system. However, you do see this 4x4 badging on a lot of them. I, can't, and I don't know. I, I kind of doubt that Ford ever put that on from the factory. I think that's something that was probably added later. But it certainly does look nice on there, and, it, and it's a little less subtle than this badging here. So, um, you know, to the Aerostar enthusiasts, you see that badge immediately, you know what it is, but this kind of gives the average passerby an indication that this is a, uh, you know, all wheel drive or four wheel drive vehicle. I think they look fantastic in white. Of course, Jay Leno always says white is the color by which you judge design. I actually think silver in a lot of cases, if it's not a metallic silver, like just like an almost unpainted aluminum look is, is almost an equally good color to judge a design. But certainly the Aerostar looks lovely in white and you see all the beautiful, subtle yet distinctive contour lines and, um, you know, all the beautiful little indentations here and there, all the, the little tiny, tiny curves and, and roundabouts within this largely wedge-shaped shaped structure that we've talked about many, many times in other episodes of Year of the Aerostar. Um, 97 of course the last year of production so we can we will see um, probably another shot here the taillights were unique in 97 where they got rid of the amber and it's only your red and, and uh, clear i happen to like the amber taillights but i do like that they did something just a little different for 97 i like that the final sort of grand finale was uh, you know demarcated in some way it looks like it's in storage in a garage here you see all your wonderful platforms now if you were going to use this as more of a work vehicle um, or a camp vehicle, you'd probably opt not to get the seats, but I would get them anyways and then just, you know, have them just in case. That was the other thing, you know, if you want to ever, a lot of these work fans, um, actually sticks his brother <laughs> who has a, a Metris. He loves his Metris, but he's always, uh, you know, complaining that with the big bulkhead in front, uh, you can't really put a kid's seat in the back, you know? So with an Aerostar at a, at a moment's notice, if you need to carry a couple kids around, you chuck that bench seat in there, bold it down. Now it is a little heavy. It's not uh, it's not, not like a stow and go seat of modern day uh, minivans. It's quite a heavy piece, but it's, it's secure, you know? So the point is that you can chuck a seat in, or if you find some captain's chairs on the used market, that would be the ultimate. Those are quite rare, but if you find a captain's chair, throw that in there, all of a sudden you got a car seat in the back take it out if you want to put cargo in. So just another sort of feather in the cap of the, the Aerostar's versatility. Fairly low load-in height to put all your lumber and any other, any other materials you may want to put in there. That's a nice feature. Just, just you know, acres of space back here. And this looks very, very clean. You see your headliners in good shape. All your plastic molding here is uh, in very, very good shape. Very tight up there. It's not warping or you're peeling or cracking or splitting or doing any of the things that the plastic likes to do in the sun. So, you know, that for, especially for a Florida vehicle is very, very impressive. Here we have your obligatory, <clears throat> excuse me, mileage shot. 179,000 um, on your... Uh, We'll call it facelifted interior, which looks very, very nice. Incidentally, my 93 Aerostar runs so cold, and I know that the gauge isn't broken because when you sit and idle for a while, it'll creep up just, you know, just over, you know, kind of between the sea and the and the, and the gauge. Um, but when it's driving, you get that airflow coming in there. It runs super cold, which I absolutely love. It gives you a lot of confidence, um, and your oil... Uh, looks like your oil temperature there. That's right about mine is, right sort of between the R and the M. Kind of sits there and doesn't really move so a little past you know right even but uh still well within your normal range just a beautiful beautiful very simple very well laid out you know all your gauges are right your, your hvac gauges are right by your steering wheel very easy to access um, this does have an aftermarket stereo and looks what looks like an aftermarket sort of a console here very nice seats on the aerostar as i, as I always talk about but very very comfortable uh armrests as well Another great feature. So your bench seats are in there, as we can see. Again, the carpets all look clean. Now these are your uh, 
as close as we get to a monochromatic seat. They are two-tone, of course, in, in terms of the fabric being different, but no piping or anything of that. Just real, real, real uh, plain Jane, but I really like it. I like this, you know, kind of contractor white with your contractor gray bumpers and your just no frills, all gray interior. I love it. Just really pure, really the essence of everything. This uh, wonderful step-up platform, again, also very helpful and really boxed in. It's kind of funny how it's just like this kind of, it almost looks like a, you know, not an afterthought, but it's just funny how it doesn't have any sort of swooping or anything. It's, it's really is a step, you know, it's like it's stairs up into your spaceship's uh, rear, you know, cargo bay. Really love that. Your seats sit very nicely above your wheel wells. You have these wonderful little net panels right there. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Again, nice work on the interior here, the little cutaway. But that's all, you know, that's all uh, the Aerostar can be tailored to, you know, whatever the, the driver's needs are. Um, so again, we come back to our uh, exterior three-quarter here. This, this roof rack is quite curious here. I'm not sure uh, if that's specially designed for something. It's very short and yet kind of high, but maybe they had skis or something on there. Who knows? But there you have it, a beautiful, beautiful uh, 1997 Ford Aerostar. I really like this one, and the price is right. I mean, you know, I always talk about financing uh, cheap cars, which is what I've gotten into kind of, and a $5,000, you know, on a three-year note, and I always tell people too, go to a credit union. You know, our local credit union, every May or so, they have a 1.75% uh, rate, and that's uh, cars 10 years or newer, so for an older car, you're still getting something like under 3% interest you're paying you know, for three years, you pay, you know, $100 a month or something like that. And you got the thing paid off. And that just allows you some more capital and cash flow to make any repairs that you will need to make on this vehicle. Now with 180,000 miles, chances are you're going to have to do some maintenance here or there. But uh, obviously it's had some maintenance done to it already. And uh, I see this thing soaking up easily another uh, 60 or 70,000 miles. Very good condition, just really spotless. I would like to see the underside of it. I'd like to get the full history and see if it's been in Florida all its life. But again, even like your seals and your rubber look like to be in nice condition. They all look like very nice and, um, you know, lubricated, not all dry and cracked out. I do like the window tin on it. Just a really, really nice package. Huh. Beautiful. So that's been, uh, you know, we, we dove into the aesthetics, but also I like to always talk about the versatility and, 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 and the, the modern practicality of the Aerostar. I think in this day and age, it still can be a very useful, practical vehicle. Um, and that's my pitch to uh, go out and buy an Aerostar. If you need an extra vehicle on your construction site, you need to tow a little bit every now and again, but you also have great payload uh, capacity in terms of weight and size. You're going to get decent fuel economy and you're going to get it for a really cheap price. Parts are still readily available for these. Um, so I think a really, really good option. And uh, also if you're going to, you know, great camp vehicle as well. And there are some, I've seen some campers, uh, Aerostar campers on YouTube. They're starting to become kind of popular. Um, so that's always a good thing. And we got to, you know, keep these things running because they are a very, very unique vehicle. And uh, still to this day, very practical, very usable. And uh, pretty darn reliable too, you know, all things considered. So, there you have it. Thank you so much for joining us here on Year of the Aerostar on Janky AF. And until next time, Janky do thanky. <laughs>